guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Saturday morning, a bit overcast, a little bit sticky, and I'm Billy No Mate. Tune shot off to the uh, local Saturday market. She's going to splash out on a new pair of flip flops today. She's celebrating, and for very good reason. Yesterday she nipped to the hospital for a periodic thyroid checkup. And after over four years, her blood test results came back clear. So we're absolutely bouncing about that result. We suspected that things might be improving because the last couple of months she's been getting more energy. Uh, she's started to lose weight. Um, and you might not believe it, but her, her mood swings have got, <laughs> got less. Um, so, yeah, she's... Um, She's getting more, more like the old tune from, from yesteryear, which is normally you'd say is all good, but the only drawback I can foresee is she's going to have even more energy for working even harder on the farm. And honestly, guys, I'm, I maxed out my top speed about six months ago, so I don't know how I'm going to keep up. But yeah, really, really good news. So getting back onto what the uh, the, the, today's video is mainly about is this little fruit bat homemade pesticide now some of you may be thinking well I thought that was the idea why you put all your poultry around your trees we don't have any grasshoppers or or um, caterpillars eating the fruit trees at all now if one gets in there the ducks get them straight away uh, what this is is on some of the fruit trees, particularly the lime trees, you get like a white, sticky substance on there, a bit of a bug. So previously, before we moved here, we were using potentially harmful pesticides. Of course, we can't, can't use those any longer because of the, the wildlife here. So what I've tracked down is a simple and cheap recipe to make your own. Now, I wouldn't normally do this this time of day. It's about nine o'clock now, half nine. Um, but it, we've got some cloud cover. If you do it in full sunlight, full heat, you'll burn the leaves of most of your trees. So I should be able to, to wing it. Right then, all you need is some sort of spraying device. So we've got the hand-driven one there, cheap as chips. Uh, then you just need your any old vegetable oil. And then the magic ingredient is a mild soap. Now, I'm giving away my youthful looks secret here. We're using my goat milk soap. Very, very mild. And this is why I have the complexion of a fresh-faced 13-year-old choir boy. Yeah, so that's quite good. Um, and that's it guys. All you need then is about three litres of pure battery acid and that kills everything. Now, just your soap and your oil. Mix it all together in a small container so that the, the soap is dissolved and then bung a load of water in with it. We use the rain water in the, from the rain butts. And that's it. It should work, and what it does, it actually suffocates the bugs. It makes a coating over them so they can't breathe. So I aim to do a, an update of this in another week or so. The old pesticides, you could see a difference within three or four days. Everything would green up, or the new shoots would come flooding out. Uh, hopefully this will have the same positive results, and we don't have to worry about the chickens and ducks eating bugs that fall off it. So not only useful tips and tricks for you boys that are looking your age, we've also got some things planned for out here. Uh, what I am to do here is extend this little shanty town effect down to here, level with the gate and come across. The reason being the young chickens and ducks here that just about strip the greenery right back here. Now the good thing was is we have 
very very few pests along where they're living at the moment so we keep everything nice and clear this side then this will take care of the area where we put all the seeds in so we've got very young plants there we don't want any bugs on them next on the list for today well I'll make a start of it the gypsy site is coming down well not all of it the structures are remaining but all the green netting is coming out and then the internal bits for all the for the chicks and ducklings that we used to use that's all coming out and that's going to be the guy ban house for those of you that don't know guy ban are the skinny Thai chickens they look like rats with with uh, wings so they like to roost very very high up and we want to keep them separate from the egg laying chickens at the moment they're all over the place they're getting on fine it's just that their uh, nesting requirements are quite different so we've got some spare wood some bamboo and a few of the bits and bobs we're going to rig up something in there for them moving on now the previous video was the lemon entry video uh, everything's just starting to pick up here apart from the flame and bloody dingo puppies doing that so all good there now you may remember I quickly turned around here and it was the snake pit it's almost clear Had a couple of fires there's been loads of cutting down and moving stuff I saved some of the best bamboo and we're almost clear we can almost get that get Caesar in here now and what we aim to do in here soon said I'm allowed is to grow more papaya trees bananas and papayas I think I've got a bit of a soft spot for or a full-on fetish this bad boy elected to grow on his own accord we just came round here one day and we saw it about two foot high uh, these you can use for some time or you can let them ripen but look at those it's absolutely full with them and this was really surrounded by all the bamboo and bits and bobs here so I've scraped around it given it some quail poo and chicken poo and hopefully it'll do even better soon started looking into actually I don't think it's grafting but taking cuttings and what she said we need to do is or I'll be doing it probably is making a cut here and here uh, wrapping it round with plastic and filling it with compost pop some water in there leave it a couple of weeks and then it'll start to root and then you cut it off after the root pop it in and then you get a shorter papaya tree that still fruits okay. this one up here is mainly for ripened fruit and you can see that is a very very short tree all that happened here is that before we had the late dugs this was down about here and we filled it up with the digger so that's nice and low that's great for picking that is that's got a few shoots on the side as well so we're going to have a bash at doing that when time allows okay so one of the next jobs then is to clear all this round here now a few people have said don't do any burning because your soil is not soil it's just all backfill from the well, not backfill but um, excess soil from the ponds that's that stuff that's the moon rock here is normal normal soil now I still didn't want to burn but the stuff here was up level with my eye if you see on some of the other videos it was a scary place didn't really like coming out here especially to pick them a lot that's why we've moved them over over there so the main challenge is what we're going to do with the rootstocks they're still smoldering from the fire yesterday and we've had a drop of rain as well so once we get them moved out of the way we'll finish getting it all clear and uh, we've got some baby papaya trees growing at the moment we'll pop them in here so that's all good this is the last bit of the land that requires clearing yeah there's some weeding to do here and there um, we've ploughed in between all the eucalyptus right at the back of the farm now uh, that will need just clearing around each individual tree sooner rather than later Toon's friend has helped her clear some of the rice there were some weeds grown in there she also came for two days 
and cleared round all our bamboo as well. 300 baht a day, you can't moan at that. So I think that's it. So I've got a busy few hours or a busy day or two ahead of me. Tune with a newfound energy will hopefully be helping a hand later on. All right, Mo. Mo, 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 Mo. Mo, 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 Mo. Mo's leg is just about fixed now. We've got the bionic dog. Dolle. So, very, very good success story. Two news to her veterinary skills. There, she had a really, really bad break here. Um, we don't know whether Spoon grabbed hold of her and shook her around a bit, but she definitely chased her. It could have been that she just took a tumble. Normally Spoon just runs and hits them here and they go flying. Um, and her legs snapped. So uh, Toon, well I held her down, Toon pulled it straight, put a splint on it, kept that on for a week or so. After that, put a bandage on there. And you could tell she was no longer in pain. Took that off, and it looks it looks great. Normally in Thailand, you know, dogs aren't pets. They don't go to vets around here in the village. She would have just been left, and a leg would have been flapping around and about three inches too short. So we were um and an iron. Well, I was um and an iron whether to take her to the vets. Toon said she knew what to do. I trusted her and uh, reaping the rewards now. I think if you took her to the vets, it'd probably have a metal plate in there. But she runs on it now. Incredible. About, about three and a half, four weeks, something like that. Got a little bit of scar tissue around there. That's that's quite normal. But she's a happy little thing. Back to her barking, biting self. Right. Before I start my job, so I've just got to go down to the fence pond over there and scare off the eagar, the, uh, the, the Thai crows. They've started to come back again now, our duck, duck egg count is going right up. So uh, very, very intelligent crows, the most intelligent bird in the UK, I don't know about the rest of the world. The RNIB in the UK carried out a study to find out which was the most intelligent bird in Britain and it was unanimous the uh, the crows stormed it um, part of the study was about road deaths by birds and there were hardly any crows killed on the roads at all and what they actually found out was you'll never see one crow on their own there's always at least two of them and crows eat a lot of carrion you know roadkill that sort of thing and not a single one was killed on the roads from cars because there was always one on the lookout telling each other when there was vehicles approaching. Now there were a few deaths that were recorded on the road and what they found out was, strangely, it was only caused by trucks and motorbikes. They were the only things that hit the crows. So they, they carried out another study and what they actually found out was the reason that the trucks and the motorbikes still occasionally hit the crows is because when they see them approaching, the ones that are on lookout can only say, Ka! Ka! Ta da for now. The story begins in a town called Dead Man's Creek. Bill Cody was out to strike it rich His fate was sealed with God's righteous wrath The day, day, day Jed Farms was crossed his path The day, day, day Jed Farms was crossed his path And Cody were two prospecting men Who came upon a ledge of solid gold The gold to keep